one. All right, digging into some of the big numbers of the week. We've had tourism numbers from Dubai Tourism. Um, we have had property numbers coming out from Property Finder. And we have had uh, some very good numbers coming out from DM. CC, uh, the uh, the free zone Dubai multi commodity centre. We are joined now on the line by Feral Ahmadi, who is the chief operating officer of DMCC. They have just seen a record June in terms of new company registrations and the best first half in eight years. Feral, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Brandy. Do you want to run us through the numbers, Feral? Absolutely. So we had a record-breaking uh, first half of 2021 with 1,230 new company registrations. And in June in particular, we had 220 new companies join us, which was record-breaking in the past seven years for DMCC. What are you putting that growth down to? So, uh, and, and multiple factors. Obviously, uh, post-pandemic, uh, the supply chains have changed. A lot of businesses uh, are relooking at their ecosystem and where they want to actually be based to ensure uh, resilience, ensure sustainability of their business. And Dubai has certainly proven itself. I mean, looking at the infrastructure, connectivity, uh, policies and regulations that were reinforced also during the pandemic. Uh, it actually, I think, uh, uh, enlisted trust uh, in a lot of businesses that Dubai is actually the place to be uh, for their future go growth and accessibility to the uh, surrounding markets. Okay. Where are these companies coming from? So we've seen um, double-digit growth, I can say, from Asia, from Europe, uh, mainly Italy, France, Singapore, as well as some of our other key markets, such as China, for example, and Israel, which we have seen a phenomenal growth in as well. To play devil's advocate, Farrell, you've had 1,200-odd companies set up in the DMCC um, in the first half. What about non-renewals? What about companies that have left the free zone? So the retention, uh, thankfully, has been extremely high. We are still uh, over 92% of retention, which has been very similar to previous years. And that boils down to a number of uh, pricing packages, incentives, waivers that not just DMCC, but the whole government, uh, Dubai government actually launched uh, during the past 12 uh, to 18 months, as well as a lot of financial incentives which were introduced by the bank and that supported their recovery a lot. Well, you've got competition coming in um, from some, some unexpected sides, funnily enough, um, when you speak about things that have been launched in the, in the last 18 months. One, of course, is those new foreign ownership laws, 100% foreign ownership for onshore companies. Um, previously, that obviously was the jurisdiction of free zones and it gave free zones a, a competitive edge. Um, one of the questions that, that, that we've been asked since those laws were announced was, what does this mean for free zones? Why why would someone be in a free zone if they could own their company onshore? Mm -hmm. So free zone is, is much more than 100% ownership. Um, the suite of services that a free trade zone offers is very different than the mainland. And majority of companies who set up in free trade zones and specifically in DMCC, they are looking to set up within an ecosystem. And we do have uh, an ecosystem for a number of verticals, specifically in the commodities uh, segments. And uh, that is the true value you add, uh, in addition to the uh, taxation exemptions and uh, income tax and corporate tax, where whenever you come to set up uh, in a free zone, uh, the promise is to exempt you for the next 50 years from uh, the company formation time. Well, one of the other uh, competitors you, you have got, almost accidentally, is the nomad visas, the work from anywhere visas, that if you are employed by a foreign company, um, you can get a visa here in Dubai or a federal visa in the UAE relatively cheaply. Um, you end up with an Emirates ID, you can put your kids into to school here. And I've had discussions with people who are the sole representative of companies from overseas saying, do you know what, that's actually cheaper than registering the company with a trade license. Is this something that you've come up against? 
So operating from anywhere and not having to physically be in, in the uh, country, that is something that DMCC and other free trade zones also do offer today. So you can still have a uh, license or an address or a virtual address, but still operate from anywhere around the world. So that is uh, not so much a difference in terms of how the structure of a free trade zone is versus the new visa category that's being introduced. You still do require to have a, a legal entity, uh, nevertheless, and be associated with a legal entity. Let's use your numbers for a bit of proxy population data, which is something that we like to do on the show. We're going to be doing a little bit later on with Proppy Finder as well. Trying to figure out um, what your numbers say to us about what might be happening with the Dubai population. Uh, with these 1,200 new companies set up in DMCC, what trends are you seeing in terms of the number of visas um, that those companies are requesting from you? The number of visas are still very high. Uh, we are not seeing a drop. Uh, and with those numbers, what we see is new ecosystems for sure. I mean, very recently in May of this year, we launched the DMCC Crypto Center. Uh, with, I think, post-pandemic, we are seeing uh, different trends. Also, uh, the adoption of blockchain, the increase in cryptocurrencies, uh, and adoption uh, of those new trends has increased phenomenally uh, post-pandemic. And that is one of the reasons why we partnered with CV Labs and we introduced the DMCC Crypto Center. And this uh, is home basically to all types and sizes uh, of crypto related businesses and activities, uh, whether uh, you are a, a blockchain uh, developing platform or you are a firm that uh, lists or issues or uh, trades uh, or offers uh, crypto related assets, uh, you can now come in and set up uh, within the DMCC free zone and we have an MOU with uh, the Securities and Commodities Authority ESCA to ensure that we have a regulatory framework also in place for businesses in the crypto space. And that is the first of its kind that is launched uh, in the UAE. Which is fascinating. I mean, you mentioned the, the regulation there. Um, if I look at what's been happening around the world recently with, with crackdowns on crypto and the, the UK um, banning one um, cryptocurrency exchange at the end of, of last month's concern in other economies as well. Um, what are you going to do to actively regulate? We've got about one minute left with you. What's that going to look like? So we are working very closely with ESCA uh, and Central Bank uh, to ensure that there is a balanced uh, regulation. Uh, so yes, as much as we would love, uh, obviously, and we will work towards a regulation, we also don't want to hinder those activities and businesses from coming to Dubai and looking at Dubai as their hub uh, for uh, their setup in the future. So uh, we will certainly uh, be talking more about crypto uh, in the future. Farah Ahmadi is the Chief Operating Officer of DMCC, talking us through the numbers there. They've seen a record June in terms of new company registrations and indeed the best first half um, that they have seen in eight years. More than 1,200 new companies set up in DMCC. Uh, speaking of...